Sea Glider, a revolutionary autonomous underwater vehicle jointly developed at the University of Washington School of Oceanography and the UW's Applied Physics Laboratory. The Sea Glider has been uh, used all around the world. There have been almost 200 of them built. A Sea Glider has no propeller, no engine. The vehicle itself is driven entirely by a change in density between it and the water around it. And we use the pitch angle to be able to make it fly through the water this way or fly through the water that way. APL scientists continue to expand Sea Glider's capabilities. What we've been working on with Sea Glider over the past three or four years is adding passive acoustic detection capability. It's a very quiet, steady platform from which to listen. What we've done has been to add a passive autonomous acoustic monitoring capability, which consists of hydrophones, underwater microphones, and an internal custom designed and built here at APL uh, recording and detection electronics board that goes inside the pressure hull of the glider. And we've been focused on detecting uh, a class of marine mammals called beaked whales. They dive deep and feed on squid at about a thousand meters depth. We're going down into the same depth strata where the animals are actually foraging for food and we are listening for their echolocation or foraging clicks that they make. Here at APL, we have groups running missions that are uh, approaching 10 months in, in length. We're continually pushing to getting one-year missions, and we think we're about, we're about to do that. And to get to year, we've been doing a lot of things to the glider and to the software to increase efficiency. One of those is going from a system that uses a high-voltage and a low-voltage battery pack to a single-voltage battery pack. The glider previously had a single, a single computer which ran everything. So the more it's away, the more energy you consume, the shorter the mission is. So by introducing an independent processor that does nothing but sample the sensors, pay attention to the science, if you will, you can sample at very high rate, whereas previously that hasn't been possible. Another really exciting development is the integration of microstructure sensors onto the glider. They respond to very high frequency fluctuations in, in temperature. And those allow the glider to measure mixing in the ocean. So the glider has turned out to be a very good platform for doing that. Another developing glider capability is the ability to actually work under, under ice cover to extend emissions in fully ice covered waters. But when it's in ice covered waters, it can't access the surface anymore. The ice cover prevents it from talking to the satellites. So no more GPS, how does it navigate? It navigates by acoustics. They're essentially a, a set of beacons in, that we put down in the water that broadcast a, a chirp, if you will. Sea Glider offers depth, versatility, and persistence at an operating cost far less than an ocean research vessel. I always tell people people should like them because they're really cool, but they do like them because they're really cheap. In May of 2013, the University of Washington licensed the manufacture of Sea Gliders to Kongsberg Underwater Technology. We've got uh, great expectations for environmental monitoring in general in, in the commercial side of things, and specifically in the oil and gas industry. The vehicles we make now, their endurance in the field is measured in hours or maybe at most days. The ability to have a system that could last months in the water is very important to us. It's a big ocean and there are really relatively few gliders out there, so there's still a big undersampling problem in the ocean, and if we can we can continue to push these out to users, I think it's really the, it, there is a lot of future, and the future is also in expanding the capabilities of the gliders. Science at work for you. This is APL, the Applied Physics Laboratory at the University of Washington in Seattle.